Mike was known for hitting his most muscular, displaying his larger than life biceps, and even from the most muscular, his calves stood out like two young donkeys caught in a sock. Boom! Like this video, subscribe to this channel, and click on the link in the description box below to sign up for the Tiger Fitness Newsletter. Within a week of publishing this video, we will give out a $50 gift card to TigerFitness.com to one lucky person who does all of these steps. Boom! What's up everyone? Mark Lovelander, TigerFitness.com, CEO, M. TS Nutrition, wow. Mass monsters of the 1990s. What if I told you there was a gentleman you might not know of if you're less than 30 years old. A gentleman that in 1991 beat Flex Wheeler, Chris Cormier, and Ronnie motherfucking Coleman to win his IFBB Pro card at the USA's. A man who had perhaps the best calves in the history of the sport, a man who lost his life due to steroid use? Let's discuss. But first, let's give a tribute video and a video letting all y'all youngsters know that if you don't know about Mike Matarazzo, the Boston Mass, you don't know bodybuilding. When I was at Flex Magazine, it was at the taper end of Mike Matarazzo's career when he started having heart problems. Mike was known for hitting his most muscular displaying his larger than life biceps. And even from the most muscular, his calves stood out like two young donkeys caught in a sock. His calves were just awe-inspiring. Every, every month at Flex, we wrote an article about his damn calves. Like his calves were just surreal. They were, to this day, I think he has above Pukowski, above anybody, I think, Matarazzo has the best calves in the history of bodybuilding. Matarazzo was a Boston native, and as I said, in 1991, he won the USA's. He moved to Venice Beach, California. He ended up living his life in Modesto, I believe. Venice Beach, California, where he left everything and wanted to make a career for himself in fitness. At that time, you can do that. At that time, you didn't have social media, and to get anything done, you have Weeder headquarters in Woodland Hills, California. You had to be in California. California was the place to be. That's where Arnold went. That's where Mike went. So he left his everything, everything in Boston, Massachusetts, and went to California to live the life of a physique superstar. However, despite all these sacrifices, despite his amazing calves, he was most notable weakness was his lack of lat development, but he made up for that with a Christmas tree conditioned back. His best appearance was 6th out of 16th at the 1993 Arnold Classic, only two years after he won his pro card and bested, soon to be eight-time Mr. Olympia, Ronnie Coleman, legend Flex Wheeler, and another legend, Chris Cormier. His health problems got the best of him. In 2004, he had a triple bypass surgery at 38 years old. While we can all point to steroids, there were other extenuating circumstances. Just want to be fair, because I'm going to give a little opinion piece after this. I want you guys to listen up. Seven pounds of red meat a day. He claimed to eat seven pounds of red meat per day. Now, I actually have on my phone here, I copied down his quote, a quote from Mike Matarazzo about his decisions. And I think that it's something that you guys would love to hear. You know, Mike Matarazzo, when he was passing away, he was very open and honest about his steroid, steroid use. Got this from Flex Online. Asked, what should those who still have a second chance do about it? The 1991 USA winner responded, put the drugs away. Only a handful of men on this entire planet make barely a decent living at bodybuilding. I happen to be one who did for 15 years, but I probably took 20 years off of my life. No amount of money in the world is worth that. I'd rather go back in time, get a nine to five job and live to a ripe old age. Like my grandfather, I took the gamble and lost in every way. 
Physically, I'm completely limited. Financially, I'm pretty close to ruin. Emotionally, it made a guy like me, whose only fear in life was the loss of his mother and father, afraid of every little ache and pain. Matarazzo encouraged bodybuilders to buy health insurance and get frequent medical checkups. He had no insurance and endured mammoth bills. Worry about keeping that body of yours as healthy as possible, because it's going to have to last you not just through your next contest or the end of your bodybuilding contract, but for a long time. And a long time for a human being is nothing. It goes by real quick. Even quicker when your health is gone and you have nothing to stand on. In 2007, he had a heart attack. He was waiting for a transplant. And on August 16th, he passed away. As someone who met Mike Matarazzo, as someone who worked around the time that Mike Matarazzo was at his peak, even though he did not win the Olympia, he did not even place well in the Olympia. In fact, sixth place in the Arnold isn't even top five. <clears throat> Mike Matarazzo was probably one of the most popular bodybuilders of the 1990s. He was known for sticking his tongue out Michael Jordan-esque during his most muscular. He was known for being nice. He was known for being a family man. He was known for being a hard worker with that blue collar, East Coast, Boston work ethic that brought him to where he was. Someone who was told he couldn't do something, yet catapulted his way to the top, winning his pro card against three of the best bodybuilders of all time. Mike Rotarazzo gives us YOLOs of the year 2017. In the era of, well, a guy I consider a friend, Boston Lloyd, three CCs, whatever it takes. In an era of Rich Piana, God rest his soul, who just passed away from... Many, many allegations of what he passed away from. Let's just say he hit his head due to um, unconfirmed circumstances, depending on who you listen to. To a day and age when Dallas McCarver died of choking. Uh, but again, it's clouded by the fact that the 911 call made by the gentleman staying with him at his house said that he was on insulin, which one can only assume he was trying to cram food down his throat in order to negate the fact that the insulin crash was coming. Um, that's just a rumor for, again, Dal, I don't want to smear anybody's name, but I just want to give you the reality of what's going on. I'm going to have a follow-up video about the top three bodybuilders who passed away too young. Andreas Munzer, who was known for his insane steroid diuretic cycles and also died early while he was probably the most shredded bodybuilder of all time, he paid the ultimate price. While Mike Matarazzo's heart condition might have been a, a genetic condition, while it might have been something that... Um, would have happened regardless. Um, I knew two years ago, I knew indirectly and directly 10 people who didn't even lift. In fact, a lot of them were runners who ended up dying of heart complications. Um, it just happens. And as I get older, more people I know pass away because I've been in this industry a long time. I've been in the workforce a long time. So a lot of guys who were in their 30s and 40s when I started in my early 20s are now in their 50s and 60s. So they're starting to pass away. I'm not going to link this directly to steroid use. I'm not going to say, kids, steroids hurt your heart. There are data from both sides. There is data showing that athletes have enlarged hearts. There is data showing that steroid use causes enlarged hearts. The question is, does steroid use cause a larger or more irregular heart than an athlete with non-steroid use? Does an enhanced athlete versus a natural athlete, what's the difference? We have no straight up studies on those two groups, but we can only assume that yes. And here's the reason why. Um, a lot of us in this industry, unless you're like Ziz or someone who's looking for more aesthetic look, keeping their weight down, a lot of us get bigger, bigger, and bigger, and bigger. The main, pre um, the main predicating factor to heart disease that we're going to see is an increased weight. What steroids do is they cause weight gain. Weight gain from muscle or fat is still tissue that your body needs to pump blood to via the heart. The heart has to work harder, and let's be real, your heart can only go so long. So let's say you have someone, Mike Matarazzo would routinely be 270 to 300 pounds. Those were the off season days when Lee Priest was known for KFC and uh, Krispy Kreme's Ronnie would get into the mid to 300 pounds. Um, you know, at that age, Dorian Yates was known for going to uh, bodybuilding shows with a bucket of KFC. It was the days when bulking was taken seriously. So the off season weight gain and also yo-yo dieting is as hard on your is harder on your system than just maintaining a weight, be it fat or skinny. So what we have here is the perfect um, the perfect storm. 
You have an enlarged heart from being an athlete and or being a steroid user. Plus, you have the increased weight that you obtain from gaining more muscle mass than you would naturally on steroids. 300 pounds is 300 pounds, whether it's 300 pounds of muscle tissue or 300 pounds of fat tissue or 300 pounds of fat and lean mass. Your body just knows it needs to pump. It needs to pump, it needs to pump. One of the reasons, you know, steroid use or not, a lot of people are downsizing. Look at, <clears throat> from just the internet community, Jerry Ward downsizing, Mike Rasheed downsizing. And this doesn't have to be steroid use. A lot of us, we're big because we're big people. Myself, downsizing. Look at Mark Bell. There's a guy who's dieted down using keto, which has perceived heart benefits or purported heart benefits. Vegans will argue with that all day long, um, which is fine, which is fine. Um, bottom line is, you need to kind of look at your overall picture of your health. Bigger is not always better. You need to look at the big picture. Mike literally lived without winning any trophies, the dream life of any fitness competitor. But once that body goes, once that body goes, you really have nothing else to stand on. So you need to look long term. It's beyond the Instagram selfies. It's beyond the YouTube videos. It's beyond the bigger by the day moments. What you need to do is look at your future. So I hope you enjoyed this. Mike Matarazzo, may he rest in peace. And hopefully you guys have a little more um, knowledge of the history of bodybuilding and who got the sport to what was its peak in the late 90s. Keep in mind, the guys who Mike beat for his pro card ended up being perennial top three finishers at the Mr. Olympia. I'm Mark Goldbiner, TigerFitness.com. Comment down below and remember, you uh, comment in any of our articles, um, you share stuff, you reward rewards points to Tiger Fitness. Rewards points go towards free supplements, free swag, which we're gonna be getting more and more in, um, to trips to the Arnold Classic, which are extremely attainable for someone like even you. Because you earn double points for every dollar spent, two points for every dollar spent, and you earn points, one point for commenting, you earn some points for sharing on social. It's an awesome situation. All right, guys, thanks for watching. That's not a game.